And at the time, there was times when I would come into the arena playing against Texas or UMass, you know, 12 o'clock noon, and I'd be in a car with two girls that I had no idea their names, and I hadn't slept yet, and I'm doing my last line of cocaine as I'm walking into the arena. And, and I hadn't ate anything, I haven't done anything, and the last thing I drank was a Budweiser. My junior season, UMass was coming back for revenge at Fresno. Jim O'Brien walked in and put his arm around me. 
And he said, Christopher, I've been watching you play basketball since you were 10 years old. I've always wanted to coach you, but I never believed you'd get this good. Don't forget, tomorrow night, same place, same time. I said, for what coach? He said, we have a speaker here. About what coach? Drugs and alcohol. I said, come on, coach. Do you know how many speakers I had in high school about don't do drugs? I'm going to sit this one out. He said, you can't. It's mandatory for all athletes on campus. If you sit this out, I'm going to suspend you for your first game. So reluctantly, I walked in late. I sat way in the back. I had the nerve to talk while the man talked, looked at my phone. I had the nerve to disrespect his story. I disrespected it because at 18 years old, I was ignorant. And I thought I was above it. Today I was in a hot gym and I said, Billy Joe, need, Billy Joe needs to pony up and pay for an AC system. <laughs> Maybe he'll get a, get a sound system. <laughs> but uh, it's an honor, it's a privilege, it's a responsibility that I do not take lightly when I present in front of your children. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing up tonight. Thank you, Mr. Williamson. Chris, come, come on over here. You said you almost cried. Well, I did cry a lot. And you have to know that this community is just an amazing community. These kids are great. I tell them all every day that they all don't live in my house, but they're all my kids. And I truly mean that. They are very, very special. And if you touched one life tonight, Chris, you made a big difference. Over this past year, less than a year, I've been to five weeks for our Hicksville kids who sat in these same seats that you do who are kids. <coughs> early 30s, they weren't, weren't, wasn't that long ago that they were here. And I hugged their moms and dads. And they said, why? We have to do something. So I just hope and pray that everyone here, our kids today, the parents that are here tonight, everyone that's here tonight, heard what you had to say, Chris, and that it makes a difference in their lives. Because I don't want to go to any more wakes. I don't want to stand in any more hospitals. It's tough being a kid. It's not easy. But you know, there's a lot of people here that would help you. Chris being a big one of them. And don't forget to reach out to them. I just want to thank Dr. Beduso. The kids learn more today than they ever could in a classroom. So I thank you for that. And thank you for sharing your life with us. that marks the end of our program this evening. I just want to urge you all 
remember, speak to your children. And when there are challenges that you face, whether it be at home, in school, in the community, we have the support staff right here in our schools to assist. But we must all communicate through this together. Have a good and safe night.